this series could go the distance. Also, I would say uh, we had Vulcan on the lounge yesterday. He said that TL's bottom lane is the best bottom lane in the league. He thought TL was going to win. And I also asked Doko last night on his stream who he thought was going to win. He also said TL. So there are a lot of people also still rooting for TL. Uh, and a lot of players actually have confidence in them because of the scrims. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. So many of the pros do have faith in this team because TL, even when they're not performing in the LCS stage, they are performing in scrims. This is one of the strongest scrim teams in the league. We have to see, can they get it all together, though? Have that success here on stage against FlyQuest. And we heard it from Fudge. He thinks that first important game is going to mean so much for the confidence of these players, for the mental state of these players. And we might be having double marksman bot lane here for FlyQuest to kick things off. Busio, definitely one of our biggest Ash enjoyers for the mm -hmm. Ash support. He loves playing pushing lanes, loves playing those aggressive matchups. And Kalista Ash is the peak. This is going to be really interesting because they we already see the enemy bot lane as well. It is Varus, uh, you know, plus the Nautilus here. I wonder if it is going to be double Doran's blade start for the Ash Kalista to try to really emphasize as much early game power as possible. As long as you don't allow yourself to get hooked by JJ, as long as you're safe around, you know, MT not being there, you're going to be able to dominate the 2v2. We see a lot of double Halo blades and things like this, double Doran's blade starts, and really emphasizing that early aggression. Yep, we're T1 now, baby. Carrier, get to work. Uh, they also have. The Talia, which was a really important pick. Uh, everyone with APA, you know, cycling through his champions is always thinks, oh, is it the Ziggs, the Aurelian Soul, or is it the Talia? Jensen picks up Talia first for having the roaming towards bottom side, but APA slams back down the Ari, which has been a good answer. All right, well, Ari gonna be coming through. We'll have to see how he's gonna be able to perform on it. You know, it has been a really popular pick around the world these days. Malignant Slitch Bane seems to be the build. It's so much upfront damage, so much guaranteed damage. It does not rely on hitting the charms, on being able to hunter zero people. And, and both of these mid laners rely on junglers with some sort of CC, some, some sort of uh, stun or something. So I think both right now are looking at banning out enemy junglers. Yep. Ari, if you have somebody with, a, with setup, boom, that's instant as well. Um, Talia does super, super well, obviously, so you can get your seismic shoves. Obviously, Vi and uh, Volibear have both already been banned, which are two of the best pairings, but uh, TL also taking out the Poppy as far as that, like, uh, disengage, trying to avoid the uh, knockdowns there for Nautilus and Ari. Also works really well uh, with the work ground there uh, from Talia with the E, because you can actually tackle them through it and yep. force the stun. Force the stun out of there. I think the big thing that Team Liquid are looking at when they're banning junglers is tank junglers in specific, because so far, FlyQuest, they have engage power, but they don't have a front line set up for this massive backline quite yet. All right, whittling down here. Poppy will be followed up with Udir. Udir, definitely something that Team Liquid have relied on more, I feel like, than any yeah. of the other teams, uh, specifically for Impact. You heard the Lounge talking a little bit about Impact and his influence on this Team Liquid squad. A lot of it was his five games of Udir that he has played so far in spring. It just allowed him to do so much more for the team, invading yeah. enemy jungle, uh, going for ganks on mid lane, getting so much extra vision for the team as well. But since they ban it out, and then FlyQuest is then forced to ban out the Rumble, um, the, the other like really oppressive top laner there, it, it looks is... like it is going to be, I would say for sure, still save red side pick here for impact. Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense, but I wouldn't have been surprised, you know, had they just left the Udyr up and tried to take it on, on four or even force FlyQuest to bin it out. And obviously they didn't want to grab it, so they're going to be forced to ban it because Bobo does play it as well, even though not as much as Impact. Uh, Zin does make a lot of sense here. You know, they need some more physical damage. And it is going to be fifth pick counter pick here for Impact. But historically, let's be honest, he's not the player that really makes the most from that. He doesn't usually go with the super spicy picks. He's usually more on the predictable side, but he can execute well. Uh, we did see a really good Jax game. And I think, unfortunately for him, resulted in a loss, uh, but was still one where he was playing very, very well. And it's going to be the Renekton. Oh, the Sejuani, Sejuani. Really strong combo on that top side. I mean, the whole map here for FlyQuest is strong. This mm -hmm. is a really, really strong early game. Aggressive lanes here for FlyQuest. Let's see what uh, Impact has in store. You mentioned the Jax already. I mean, they, they actually haven't locked the Sejuani. I assume it's going to go there, though. Yeah. It's such a good pairing. Uh, and it puts so much pressure on whatever top lane pick you are going to have for Impact. So they're kind of trying to force him into something that is more defensive. 
uh, because there's not a lot of things that can out-duel Renekton Sejuani, even yeah. if you have a Xin Zhao as your jungle. I mean, I think you can go Jax and kind of play it as a skill matchup, you know, be able to actually try to avoid those stuns. Aatrox would make some sense here as well, uh, but not exactly the most inspiring is that fifth pick counter pick. Yeah, definitely not early game. Aatrox is like, all right, <laughs> I am not messing around yeah. with uh, Renekton Sejuani early. Maybe after we get some levels here, they can, they can turn something around. But this is such a cool look, I think, for FlyQuest yep. to be the ones on stage here that want to take priority and want to make a lot of these early moves, especially having the confidence to first pick Kalista and go with the Kalista Ashlane for their young players, their rookie, Masu, who has done so well with this team um, and ha really has been a rising star. Absolutely, and on the other side for TL, most of their success has come from late game scaling comps, from playing around 5v5. I think this comp can 5v5 well, but it's not you know, by any means a full hard scaling composition. You know, I do think it's much more mid gamey you know, with, with the Zin, with the Ari. They want to be able to brawl. They want to be able to do that. So we'll see if they can be proactive in the early game, if they can really keep up with what FlyQuest is trying to do here. Because I think FlyQuest got some really strong lanes. They have a lot of avenues to attack. They have a lot of ways to engage. They have a lot of CC and they've yeah. got themselves a really strong draft. I mean, the thing that I like the most about the engage is that it's non-committal engage. You fish for a glacial prison, you get a flash, all right. You don't have to force everything else. You throw out an arrow from Busio as well. You can get summer spells or you can lay up for those guaranteed picks on the side of FlyQuest. Whereas Team Liquid, for them, the engage power really comes through the bottom side of the map. Nautilus and Varus, they have to be synced to find that one target to pick off in these fights. I'm I'm a little worried for Umpty here. I was I was pretty surprised he went with the Zin Zhao picks. Pretty hard to play Zin Zhao into a Talia. Um, and the other Freljord champions with Sejuani and Ash here too. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Emily was talking about as well how, how many risks he likes to take, how aggressive Umpty likes to look. If you're on a Zin Zhao and you, and you get punished early, then it can snowball against you pretty hard. But they're all going bottom side here for TL. Yeah, and they have a ward, so they'll spot a FlyQuest move up. I think both teams just five stacking, you know, hoping that the other team is going to invade into them. I don't think we're going to end up getting any action here. But Impact, 600th career game in the LCS. Third player to accomplish that. Pretty incredible career Hell he yeah. has had here. Won a world championship before even coming over. But has had such an amazing career. Definitely the most successful, most tenured top laner we have in this league's history. It is worth mentioning, you know, I touched on the double Dorans. I was expecting it from the uh, Ash Kalista. Corja J actually went Doran's ring to start here to try to match some of that power, but Busio did not elect to start with the D Blade. So he started starting with that support item. Uh, so he is going to be a little bit weaker as a result. And they're actually playing Cleanse Heal down on that bot lane instead of what is the more oh. traditional. Oh. Dredge line lands right onto Moss, who forced to cleanse, needs to use the flash as well. So much damage in the early game. And this is this is the whole plan for TL. Since their bottom lane is the kill bottom lane, they've got the CC, they have the Nautilus they get an early huge advantage here. Double summoner spells, and Xin Zhao is starting on top side, of course, so he's gonna path down towards this lane. You have to think Umpty is gonna make an early move towards this bottom lane. I also really wanna know what's gonna happen mid lane now, because APA started uh, Charm and Flash Charmed there to be able to actually commit to that play. So he gave up a lot of his own power in this lane to be able to help down towards bot side. We'll see if this is gonna make any sort of an impact from Jensen, if he can use this for any sort of an early move with Inspire to try to take advantage of that. Uh, that could be huge because definitely Masu and Busio on the back foot from the word go. Oh man, so we're gonna have a uh, summoner spell disadvantage on bottom side for them, but massively pushing solo lanes here for FlyQuest. Spotted. And and both junglers are headed down to the bottom side. Hawkshot always super nice uh, there. Busio landing it, but both junglers are gonna be heading down here. So should be able to match for the, for the Sejuani. Inspired's been very good uh, about covering the necessary. Never mind, hook lands. Ignite onto Busio, does not pop the flash, but that's a lot of damage after that engage from Core JJ. But I assume they're just gonna back off here. They should just reset. They know that Zin's clearing down. They know that they're low. They timed this out really, really well. You know, once they got the hawk shot, they got that information. They've been stacking the wave. This was really well handled after a super tough level one. Core's gonna try to stop the base though. And he is going to unfortunately spot Masu. Masu needed to recall in a bit of a better spot. Maybe he's trying to bait him into Inspired at this point. We don't have vision on this Edgewani, but I feel like maybe he's around. Uh, yeah, I feel like that would also be a really dangerous bait because he doesn't know where what, Zin is. What is he doing? He needs his base by the tower. Yeah, he's going to get his recall interrupted. 
He's desynced now with Busio and he's sub 50% HP. I mean, yeah. he, he literally just wasted 20 seconds. Like, because he, he started, he could have just recalled literally where Busio did by the tower, and then Core can't stop you. But twice he started up the recall uh, over by that tri brush, you know, maybe betting on the fact that Core wouldn't walk over there, thinking Sedwani could be there, but uh, not really a, a high risk, high reward type play, so. Inspired trying to play off his pushing mid lane here. Of course, we did also get a shot there of Whippo, who was proxy farming between the two towers on top side since they got that hawk shot confirmation of where Umpty was. But Masu couldn't base. He might just die because of those failed recalls. Inspired needs to cover this dive here. Umpty is here first, but Inspired is right behind him in fog. Umpty is going to get face checked here by Inspired. Should be fine. Early game damage from Sejuani is just a little bit with the permafrost as Umti dashes right back in. Yeah, all you ever want there is a little health trade. Uh, try and use your aftershock and get an upfront yeah. trade since your bottom lane can't join. Masu's in no position to get out of the tower, so gets a little bump there, makes them stay honest. They're, they're not going to get any extra pressure. And in the end, Kalista here, Masu, has... Uh, cleaned up the CS, so hasn't been bad for him yet. Even though it started out pulling both summoner spells, uh, you know, getting recall interrupted there, just sticking around for the wave and, Whippo, and getting the CS. Maybe solo kill on the top side of the map, but Impact still has flash available. Whippo doesn't have level six, but he's pushed up a massive way into the top side. He's waiting for his CDs. He has five seconds on his stun. Umti is coming as fast as he can. Level five now reached by Impact. Gets a little bit of extra healing from that base level up. So he should be fine now. That was actually critical, though. If Umti got there a couple seconds later, Impact is for sure dead under his tower. And Boob was actually crushing in the 1v1. He didn't have to TP. Impact had already used his TP and had no gold when he TP'd back. He just bought the refillable to that double longsword from Whippo, who didn't even have to use his TP. Now he's going to come back with another longsword as Inspired is working on these grubs. So a great start from Whippo in the solo lane. Mid lane, the charm start hasn't really amounted to much, and the flash is almost back here for APA, so you can definitely kind of call worth on that. Uh, but likewise, down in bot lane, Masu is about to have his flash back, and they have weathered the storm. Yeah. Having, having the push was super nice, at least, though. You know, having both solo lanes push, I uh, guarantee grubs here for, for FlyQuest, for Inspired. But Team Liquid, now they've got another roam timer. Core JJ goes mid first, pushes it out for APA. But... Doesn't look like it's going to be any extra action down there. And Umpty visits topside as Impact is almost dead. Impact pops the world ender. Whippo has his Dominus, but Inspired is here for the counter. And Umpty has to leave his top laner to die. First blood for Inspired. Nicely done. FlyQuest crushing on the top side. That is all Whippo. Yeah, it's Inspired getting the kill, but Whippo dominates the 1v1, forces out the early TP with no buy, then TPs back and crushes him. Dredge line onto Masu, the Ignite already cleansed, but a flash from Yon can secure the kill. He doesn't even need to. Gets the 1v4 as Busio now on the back end. A 2v2 by Yon and Core JJ. He just barely didn't have his flash. There were seconds left on the flash there for Masu, and they capitalized off that earlier level one play. Good timing. Just at the very end, they make it pay off, and it pays off huge. It's a double kill. Both kills into Yon's pockets here. Vulcan did say this was what he thought was the best bottom lane in the LCS. Core yeah. JJ's Nautilus, him on engaged champions, always to be feared. And they do end up finally capitalizing on it, even though there had been a CS lead there for the FlyQuest duo. Chasing them both down. Yep, and th that's that's kind of the nice edge that you walk with these double marksman lanes. You can really punish and you can create big advantages, but you make that one misstep and you can get crushed. Is Impact maybe in trouble? Yeah, he still has Flash, but Whippo is just completely manhandling this top lane. But I just have to say, the timing on the hook was so nice from Core. Yon and the tower, I believe, both hit that minion, the range minion, at the same time. So it died right as the hook was coming out in the air. They thought they were safe behind that minion. Perfect timing, perfect placement there from TL to capitalize. And maybe FlyQuest is getting a hair overconfident as they were seconds away from that Flash being back on Masu. Yeah. Core, Core has always been so good at using the hook champions through those dying minions. Top side, though, Inspired. Impact still doesn't have World Under quite yet. It looks like it's just coming off cooldown, but they get the CC stun, and it's just too easy for the FlyQuest jungle top duo. Yeah, that is perfectly done there. Inspired pulls aggro with the passive from the armor. Bupo flashes in with the empowered stun, guaranteeing the Glacial Prison to come through there from Inspired right after. Nice and easy. They make it look flawless, and Impact is out of this game. Well, what do Team Liquid do now, folks? I mean, if you're topside, who has been the most important? Yeah. <laughs> pray, pray that Yon is going to be able to carry you through the mid game.
Big thing to note though, APA is not that far down in CS. He's been keeping up with Jensen in the mid lane so far. We haven't seen any plays made from him yet, but he is past that level six point. Spirit Rush is available. I want to see if he can link up with the bottom side to really snowball that further. I think it just gets so much more painful for top side when you're playing uh, against champions that rush Eclipse as well. Not yeah. only is it a lead for Whippo, but because Eclipse is so cheap, you get this early lead and you absolutely smash the hell out of this lane. Now he's got fully completed Eclipse and you're looking at steel caps on the side of impact. So bottom side is going to be the only hope for Team Liquid. Maybe APA can can get involved there. Um, you know, Ari roaming down towards bottom side to try and uh, help out as well. But Jensen has done quite well on this Talia keeping control of the wave and, and clearing that out. And of course he does have ulti to answer as well. Another powerful early completion is the Knight's Vow. Inspired has been going more heavily towards this. You know, a lot of people obviously were building this in the past, but it was more like a second item thing. The new era is just kind of just rushing these support items straight up first item as fast as you can get them. We saw him earlier, you know, in, in the season going for this. And he was actually linking with Blippo and just playing heavy 2v2 on top side because they already have that lead. They have this powerful jungle top duo. That's going to make it even harder to deal with this Renekton. Yeah, everybody's been doing it, especially since the Frozen oh. Heart nerf. Masu's in trouble, has flash and cleanse available, but he knows oh. that he's a goner either way. Yawn picks up another kill. Okay, so that only hope is looking like a pretty good hope, though. The prayers are being answered. <laughs> so far <laughs> that that team liquid hope on the bottom lane is holding strong but yeah the the frozen heart nerf everyone just finally realized how efficient knight's vow is and there was a little change uh that they did to knight's vow this season it has actually been this way for the whole season um where it is not free mitigation damage anymore yeah, it's uh, so you actually do get mitigated and so you take less damage um and feels really really nice mm -hmm. uh allowing for your AD carry or in some cases your top laner to, to give you that extra healing as well. It just makes those uh, those duels for Renekton and Sejuani even more unbeatable. Yeah, it's definitely tough. How, how are you feeling about the fact that you're no longer a jungler, you're just a forest support? Yeah, I talked about this with Flowers. <laughs> Not great. It, it's, Not great. it's never great when, when we turn into, you know, having to Flowers rush, is like, uninstalling the game if it's, if it's a <laughs> Knight's Vow rush angle. It's Knight's Vow or like Locket of the Iron Solari was yeah, another yeah. one of these where it's just so efficient and you need it for your team. Yeah, but... I mean, this is just flashbacks <laughs> of the Redemption rush era too. <laughs> That was awful. Heart of gold and all the super old stuff. Honestly, though, uh, let's see what Team Liquid can continue to do on the bottom side, because obviously FlyQuest, massive, massive uh, power difference on the top side, and, and Blippo's almost going to be able to finish off this tower. Honestly, when Inspired does get here, they'll probably finish it off and uh, maybe look for something else. Looks like he's recalling, but... Yawn here does have his Ghost Blade, so mm -hmm. very, very painful poke. Yeah, I mean, the, the bot lane is is pretty useless, honestly, for FlyQuest as well. So, you know, while they're not as, as out of it as uh, Impact, I think, is on the top side, the bot lane is put, put very far behind. And this is to the point where anytime Umpty comes down, if Core can just hit an ult on one of these guys, they are pretty much guaranteed dead. So TL definitely have a way to win this game. They have a really strong lane to play through. And we'll have to see if they can actually make it work for them. Also worth noting that it's six grubs that have been grabbed yeah. up there for FlyQuest. So pretty easy for Whippo, who has this pushing matchup, just slowly chip away at that. And the problem is, like, the, the poke against a fed Sejuani and fed Renekton isn't really going to be able to win you the game. So yeah. uh, they're going to have to do some work uh, as far as objectives as well, try and get the rest of the team back into this. Whippo and Inspired will lead the charge. Yeah. Dragon Timer coming up pretty soon as well. Hopefully they can get a uh, top side objective taken care of. I mean, Umti is forced to shadow impact here because Whippo can just threaten to take the turret. The minions might just take it by themselves as he barely, oh man, impact was not able to take out the last minion before the auto attack comes through. Whippo is gonna land FlyQuest first brick of the game. I mean, six void mites. Yeah, that, that thing is for sure going down at mm. some point. So uh, no extra risk there trying to defend or anything and sticking around and that's just gonna be the outer tower taken down before the dragon spawn is kind of the break point I was looking at. Hopefully they could finish up that top objective before the, the dragon does come. And now they have. Plus with unleashed teleports ready, I feel like FlyQuest uh, are definitely going to have a big advantage. Uh-oh. Over, over 2,000 gold lead. 
I mean, Impact has the ultimate and he has Flash, but Whippo might just corral him in a corner and he's got Jensen as backup as well. The Weaver's Wall is going to cut off the escape route. Impact might try to Flash, but it might just be a little too late here. Impact, just one more movement to go, but Jensen just throws rock after rock after rock and takes out Impact. Yeah, you never need to throw your seismic shove. Just run him down with the rocks. Uh, and so they go for the kill on top side instead of Dragon, and Umpty's going to try and rush Dragon. There's the TP from Whippo, though, and Whippo is going to be really strong as he comes down. Arrow lands right onto core JJ. Yawn has to back up to safety, but Umpty still has the Dragon being whittled down. And this should be the second Dragon of the game going over to Team Liquid. So they've got the Dragon stacking on their side a little slow to start, but that is another condition for them to play to. Definitely a mistake, though, from Whippo. You know, he, he, he bases, he TPs down like he wants to fight. He hadn't actually spent his gold. He forgot to buy. So he didn't actually buy anything with his gold in pocket there. Maybe that's why they called it off. Maybe they just thought it was going to be too risky in general. But uh, a wasted TP is he TPs down to bot and then immediately has to base. A little bit of egg on his face, spends his gold. Now he's going to hoof it back down to bot lane again. I mean, you can tell that FlyQuests are really trying to snowball Whipple's lead to the other side of the map. Unfortunately for them, they miss up the play and don't really get anything off the back end. Whippo now is level 11. He's going to be super strong in the side lane. I I'm just curious if, like, do FlyQuests really want to force these fights or do you just let Whippo take up the 1v2 in these solo lanes and force that as pressure? I mean, I think, to, to me, it's you keep Whippo in the side lane as long as he can continue chipping away at these towers, yep. right? If he's actually being into a position where he can take objectives, where he's extending the lead, that's where it's good. If it ever stalls out, then you need to have him grouping with the team and forcing objectives elsewhere because you need to utilize the Renekton's power to the utmost. He is at such an incredibly strong point right now. So if he can't pressure an Ari under the tower, he needs to group up his team, force around objectives. And TL, they just need to group and look for their pick when FlyQuest are trying to play all three lanes. Uh, and get the extra objectives. Try and use your Nautilus plus Varus plus Ari combination uh, to pick one of these people off. You know, when FlyQuest spread themselves a little bit too thin, that's your time to try and punish there. Inspired has just been 100% on all of the top side oh, objectives this go. game. Six Void Grubs, a Rift Herald. Their turret pushing power this game is just massive. This is pretty nicely handled, though. Obviously, TL couldn't actually challenge because Renekton was moving up. So what they do is they back off, but they know Renekton moved up to mid. So Core and Yawn walk into the bot side jungle, ward that up, and actually guard that jungle so Bwibbo couldn't walk back down and stop APA from taking the tier one. So that's really nice movement around the map. Yes, there is the other punch on the other side here, as it's going to be the getaway car uh, for Jensen. So they grab something else on the top side. But I do think that's still really smart play from TL and deserves to be highlighted. And in he doesn't get it to, to go down a different lane or anything, just uses it uh, to get back out to safety. Uh, there's some fun shenanigans uh, mm -hmm. people have done in side lanes, pushing with these things and then trying to use the CC Drift immunity the <laughs> to go for it. But uh, these wards that they left on that invade and, and controlling the, the split push on bottom side are now being cleared out. Nice little chunk there, though, at least onto the support ash. APA gets cut off by Whippo, forced to use the Spirit Rush. And that ultimate's gonna be gone for the next minute. I will say that was very respectful from APA. I guess he thought there was gonna be other people from behind Busio, but that was a free kill, right? If he actually wanted to pop his ult, that's a guaranteed kill there onto Busio. Um, but if someone's behind Busio, maybe it goes bad, so that's what he's worried about. And the pain train does not stop for impact as he is cut off by Jensen once again. Another death brutal. in the top laner of Team Liquid. This is, I mean, you said it, Azale, it's brutal. Do you miss me, Impact? <laughs> Jensen and Impact, obviously, <laughs> old friends, old teammates from Jensen's time on Team Liquid as well. And he's just going to say hi to his old buddy, you know? That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, I heartwarming. Feel like you, you always want to beat up your old teammates. You want to be like, ah, yeah, you know I was better. It's very funny because uh, they asked Jensen about, you know, beating up his old team, too, on the, mm -hmm. the interview afterwards where he was talking about Dignitas. And mm -hmm. I was like, eh, honestly, in this game, it feels like he has more of a focus on beating up Impact than he did on the entire Dignitas team. <laughs> Here's a question for you, too. Well, I know that Impact is not having the greatest game in this opener of the series, but would you rather have Impact getting all these deaths or is there anyone else on the team that would be taking these deaths? Because impact... I'd rather Core JJ has all those deaths. Well, okay, okay, <laughs> and my okay, top leader is useful. What, what, what I'm trying to get at is kind of like the mental endurance. Because Impact has been a long tenured career player in the LCS. Yeah. Whereas if Yawn or APA He's are not gonna tell. These, yeah. He's not going to tell. I think that's what you're trying to get at, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, he is a really good weak side player. He knows how to mitigate loss. Uh, that's one of the skills that, you know, Fudge was talking about. He was saying, you know, Sniper is. Oh. 
Uh, not going to go for it. Does force out the heal, wow. though, as Yon used it for the move speed to try the to juke out game. a potential I, ult. I actually love those moves. It's, you know, trying to make people flinch. Yeah. Uh, it's this, the schoolyard tactics going <laughs> at them and seeing seeing if they throw any summoner spells or uh, or anything useful We're there. the schoolyard bully, Kobe. <laughs> You're trying to make people... <laughs> I'm just saying I've seen it in Okay, action, you've seen it. You know? And you stopped it. I've, Being I've the good Samaritan it. that you are. Exactly. Okay, I, I like it. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think, you know, it's one of the things that was really interesting about Fudge talking about Sniper was how good he is in lane, but he was saying he's not as good at losing gracefully, which is a really important skill in top lane. Because when it goes bad in top lane, it can go real bad. And Impact has a lot of experience, you know, playing from all different scenarios, from ahead, from behind, from even, and he's incredible at it. All right, Teleport coming in from Impact. 3v1, potential onto Whippo. Inspired is running as fast as possible. The Dominus is popped. Ash Arrow is going to stop Impact and Distraction. The global power from a fly quest. The Avengers are coming in, and this just might make Team Liquid really regret this decision. APA forced the Spirit Rush backwards, and now they're on the run. Whippo gets charmed up here, but the flash into the stun. Enough damage. Jensen follows three. The three man knockup is not going to matter. Oh. As the seismic shove definitely matters. Triple kill for Jensen. Looking for more. Masu picks up the last kill. Oh my goodness, it's brutal. Talia is so good coming in to defend when the enemies have invested so much chasing deep there onto Whippo. Fly quests are gonna run over the map now. After a play like that, it just blows the map wide open. They already had a giant gold lead, but now they stop the dragon stacking and they get uh, the bottom outer tower pushed in as well. Jensen's even taking away your Gromp. Like, nothing is yours anymore. Yeah, this is brutal. Not even 20 minutes in. 5.5k gold lead here for FlyQuest. Jensen massive in that one. Bwipo really getting the utmost out of his lead. He knows how to push an advantage. He knows how to play these fights outright. And, and look at the mini-map. Everybody here with uh, their globals is coming down. Teleport was used from Jensen to get to the tower, and then he ults from tower over to join as the arrow from Busio also land here uh, onto Team Lupe. It didn't really matter that Inspired Sejuani ult went in the middle. It's a slow field. It's fine. They had him invested already. And while Team Liquid do get their kill on the Whippo, that seismic shove was so wide. I mean, it, ah! it got all of them. Yeah. And we're back to live and we're back to watching another TL member die. And they are now sharking around the Baron here. They've got the Glista. They're going to start this up. We've seen Glista smites go wrong, but Umti has no flash, and it's going to be tough for him to make something happen here. Wait, there was a Blast Cone up there behind Baron, wasn't there? They're, yeah. they're coming down to the front instead. 8,000 HP on the Baron. Umti does not have flash, so once he gets in, it's a one-way trip with the wind becomes lightning into the Audacious Charge. He sees it. He's able to keep the Baron in his range. Impact is flanking from the left side. Great charm, lands on a Jensen. That's a big shutdown, goes over to Yawn, but the Baron is secured by FlyQuest as UmT and Yawn try to deal with Whippo, who is trying to distract the back line. APA finds another one on the Busio in the back. Inspired is cut off, trying to corral around Whippo. This might have just gone wrong for FlyQuest. They need to keep their Baron buffs alive as Whippo now turns right back on the UmT, oh. but Yawn pops him like a balloon. Inspired is now on the run. Court JJ is back from the grave, and he's got vengeance on his mind as Masu might just be the next one. Team Liquid have turned this game around. FlyQuest got the barrel, but Team Liquid got the ace. That is massive for them as they were so focused on actually finishing this Baron. You know, Bwipo is zoning in the jungler way, but he's dying as he's doing it. Ari is killing people on the other side as FlyQuest are so fully committed to this. Masu and Inspired never peel off the Baron. They want to play for the finish, but look at Busio already very low. The Chains of Corruption catches on to APA. Uh, excuse me, as APA goes forward, it caught on to Jensen, is able to follow that up with the charm, gets a kill, then on the bottom side of the fight, Wibble is also losing in a 1v2. Yeah, the key here is that pick that you talked about, landing the Varus ultimate into the charm from APA and deleting Jensen. Jensen had five kills, he had the bounty on his head, he was the super fed Talia. And so while FlyQuest make the call, uh, to try and delay, and they just chase Umpty out. Whippo's job was just push out enemy jungler. We'll finish it. We got Ren. We got Smite. They do end up getting the Baron, but because Jensen got sniped there by Yawn, they actually end up losing over 3,000 uh -oh. gold. Whippo's here. Inspired is almost critically low, but he's going to be saved by his teammates for now. But now he's going to be pinned in by the Weaver's wall. He's got nowhere to go. His impact comes in and takes him out of the fight. But Yawn falls to Whippo and Busio on the back end. Jensen is pumping out the damage with these rocks. APA tries to get in with the Spirit Rush, finds Masu in the back, but Impact is now left alone. And this match is turning out to be a bloody one. Yeah, this is turning into an absolute bloodbath here. Both teams scrapping it out, but 
so much gold swung back the way of TL. They are back into this game. TL, 10,000 <laughs> LCS kills now. Pretty incredible stuff. Only behind C9, who is in first place. But that was, you know, 1k shutdown on Jensen. Five total kills. More bounties taken off. Another couple kills down on that bot side. As they're looking for another pick here on Inspired, and they are able to get it. Yeah, I mean, so so this is a very different pick target, obviously. This is a Sejuani, <laughs> and they're not picking Jensen. Just wait until Jensen arrives, because he's almost done with his death cap. The entire game right now for TL should be thinking about how do we kill Jensen first? They thought they had a kind of a free pick there, yeah. but every time they've made a pick on one of the frontliners of FlyQuest, guess what? Talia gets to wall in, and Jensen just gets to destroy you joining late while all of your focus has been on one of the frontliners for FlyQuest. It was Whippo originally in the side lane, this one in the jungle pick onto Inspired. That actually is to the benefit of FlyQuest, because then their carries just to get to dump damage. Impact might be gone. Still has flash. Pops the world ender. Turns on to Jensen. Umpty is here for the counter. The there flash he... over the wall. And Inspire can't do anything to save Jensen. Oh. Big shutdown to Umpty. That is massive. Umpty comes in right at the right time. And there's another fight mid. Teleport from Impact. Tries to join the fight. Whippo already flashed in to try to guarantee the kill on Yon. He finds it. Impact is there. Finds revenge. Masu pinned against the wall. Inspire tr comes in. Tries to save Masu. He's still alive. He's kiting this one out. Masu is still hitting. And no one is hitting it. Tries to find it! Quadra for Masu! Oh, that is League of Legends right there, baby! While they make a pick on the top side, Team Liquid still try and fight mid, but FlyQuest still reign supreme. Masu collects the Quadra. It's the rookie Masu going crazy on the Kalista in that mid lane fight. Even with <laughs> Jensen down, it just didn't matter. TL pile in, but they had spent so much on getting those other kills that when they arrive, they don't have the tools to actually deal with Masu here. It's them looking for the initial play on the FlyQuest side as they catch on Eon, oh. they decide to go for it. In goes Whippo, but great peel from both Core and APA as they look to turn around the fight. Yeah, I, I really like the arrow from Busio and, and the attempt here from FlyQuest. Um, I mean, uh, the attempt for the uh, the turnaround here. But yeah, it, it's going to be a massacre after they, after they get some space here. Masu, nice dodge there too. The last hop to the side of the wind becomes lightning. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Whippo popping off there, cheering on his teammate. Oh my, this is so fun. This is so fun. Now with six and a half thousand gold, uh, they should be able to pick up Dragon and push on bottom side too. Team Liquid, you gotta make the call. Give mm -hmm. that up. We've given up way too much gold in the last couple of fights, so just try and split push. <laughs> oh, Jensen throwing Wasn't his hat this into the ring with the trash talk. Oh my God, Jensen needling, uh, needling APA there a little bit. Is that incarnation bit. back? <laughs> I mean, the, the Jensen matchup versus APA is one of our featured matchups for this game. Jensen has so much experience. The the analyst was, <laughs> oh my God, it get, continues. Oh, <laughs> I love the trash talk back and forth between some of these players, man. It's so fun. Uh, definitely spices up these matchups even more, but this is this has been a, a really exciting game. Jensen is monster fed though. Still, at the end of the day, he's like 2,000 gold ahead of the second richest person, pretty much, or at least 1,500 ahead. A ridiculously fast death cap, ridiculously fast fourth item coming in behind that. Uh, APA is going to be miles away from catching up to that point. Yeah, it's, it's been. It's been such a massive split for Jensen, uh, for mm -hmm. FlyQuest in general, but him in particular coming off of his uh, Dignitas uh, time, really, really big resurgence for Jensen. Everybody's been, uh, you know, even throwing his name around as far as all pro votes, as far as MVP votes even uh, a little bit. And of course, he is one of the most seasoned players in all of the LCS. Well, that was something I got to talk to Nuketuck before the season started about Jensen. He was saying, you know, he has such faith in Jensen's skill as an individual and that Jensen was really motivated, yeah. you know, on this FlyQuest team because he came in, he saw the level of his team, he saw the level of his teammates, and it really was motivating him to work hard, to be playing at his best, because he knew he needed to be playing at his best to really live up to the expectations of this squad. And I think he's done incredible with that. Is Busio going to split the uprights? He'll go with the arrow, but that's okay. Non-committal engages, as we talked about at the top of the draft with FlyQuest. Glacial Prison does land. They want to commit. Whippo is thinking about it on the right side of this flank, and they're just corralling Team Liquid back into their jungle. 
Yeah, it, it hits on Umpty, and he's got Merc Tread, so it wasn't going to last that long. They don't want to fully commit to it. Uh, he throws that out. If you get a juicy target, maybe you all pile in. At the end of the day, as you said, non-committal, not that big of a deal. But they are going to maintain that mid lane control. That allow them to move over, clear out some of the vision that we saw TL get in around this Baron. And they're going to always be threatening this now. You know they can kill this Baron very quickly. They also have a really good turn. So mm -hmm. Ash Arrow, very low cooldown. You just saw Busio throw one. Guess what? It's back up again already. Uh, Inspired still has a little while on the Sejuani ult, but they're making them check. Oh, Cork, great flash from the Seismic Shove. That's going to be a summoner spell down. Ash Arrow does connect onto Umti. Do they want to commit this time? But he dashes to the minion. The, the cooldown desync there is actually really big. Because if you Ash Arrow while you have a Seismic Shove ready, that person is dead. If that arrow lands on somebody and Seismic Shove is ready, but they use the Seismic Shove first on Core JJ, and then it wasn't ready when the Ash Arrow was up. Oh. Kill go from the prison, but Core JJ gets knocked up. AP on the side, threatening the flank. Impact on the right side of the flank. They've pinstered FlyQuest from both sides. The solo laner showing up huge from Team Liquid. They're going to find Inspired as well, and Blipbo's cut off for the rest of the team. What an incredible fight from TL. They come in from both sides at once. Blipbo had early popped the ulti previous to that, thinking he was going to be able to get a play. Renekton had no ult. Impact comes from the top, and APA comes from the bottom, and they crush FlyQuest in that fight. And just like that, Teal are going to get the Baron. They're doing incredible to fight from behind. They were, they were just 6,000 gold up, and the trash talk <laughs> continues from APA. I mean, that's uh, that's my feeling. Is it, it was a really big choke because they just spaghettied all their big CCs. They, they used the Seismic Shove just open on the Nautilus, and then he flashes it. Then they use the arrow, and there's no follow-up with a Seismic Shove. Then they whiff the Sejuani ultimate, so all of the big threatening CCs have been used. So Core JJ says, yes, please, we'll take that engage. And then beautiful flank mm -hmm. from uh, Impact and APA here. Impact from the top side, APA from the bottom side and they just dissect this FlyQuest squad. Massacre, and they're gonna be able to get the Baron for the turnaround. He's up. It's what serious. a punish. Yeah, you have to incredible. you have to jump on moments like that after you know, oh, they just used Ash Arrow, they just used Sejuani Ultimate, they missed these, they didn't have the follow-up. And man, uh, oh, we'll see if this pick is gonna happen there. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Jensen just pops for JJ. There you go, the guarantee. Sejuani ult, then it Seismic Shove, with it being ready, guaranteed kill. They got Core JJ, now the pushback. I've gotta say though, man, if you lose this game as FlyQuest, that is crazy as far as how tilting that is gonna be, as Impact gonna have to pop the World Ender to run away, uh, because they were in so much control. And when you are really ahead in the game and you kind of bungle it a little bit and the other team capitalized on it, you start sweating. You're going to get nervous. You're going to get stressed out. Arrow connects. Can Jensen get in a range for the seismic shove? Yes, he can. He pops the Crescent Guard. It's going to keep him safe for now. Yeah, I mean, especially with the with the trash talk. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the ones who started the trash talk. <laughs> and if, uh, if there's a clap back. Ah! Charm doesn't connect onto Whippo. Yawn was in hot pursuit as well. Chain of Corruptions does land. And the damage should be enough. The Seraph's Cage is popped, tries to turn around, looks for the Empowered Healing, but it's not going to be enough. This does give FlyQuest the opportunity to take the third dragon. I mean, that is that is a, a good dragon here for FlyQuest. And we'll see if they can actually get towards Soul. That's their third straight dragon after TL were able to get the first couple. But TL is staying aggressive. They're staying active on the map. And this is what you have to love from a team when they're behind. You don't just roll over and die. You don't allow them to take control of the game. You try to dictate the pace. You try to make plays where you can. And FlyQuest is playing way too confident. They're playing way too cocky. They're pushing up in spots where they shouldn't be. And they're getting hit for it. Yeah, I, I think that they just need to refocus and coordinate a little bit. Yeah. Um, sometimes they, you get a little ahead of yourself when you're so far ahead and you feel like, you're so far ahead that you can just throw out some abilities. Arrow. It hits APA. He's already cast a Spirit Rush. Inspire, does he have Glacial Prison? He's just going to wait it out. It's an ulti for ulti trade. All right, push on top side. Definitely is going to get up to the tower then, though, since since everybody went mid after that arrow. And with the Baron buff, I think they just melt through this. Yeah, you honestly be careful, though. They know there could be a TP angle coming through. So he's going to have to watch out for it. You could see that TL were pinging assist pings and question mark pings behind them in the lane because they didn't know, is there a lane ward here? Are we going to die to a Bipo TP? Yeah. So they don't want Varus to be too far up. So they're playing with respect to that. We know in Spectator that there's not that ward, but they don't have that luxury. Yeah. Weaver's Wall is going to come through the mid lane. They're going to try to cut off impact. He has flash available. What does Jensen do? Okay, he dashes over the wall. Not going to connect. Really it's just smart. another world ender popped. 
Really, really smart from Impact. Jensen hops off to the left. And Impact goes over to the wall so he can just jump over to the right. Really good avoidance there from the uh -oh. veteran, but... Okay, he dashes through, but he gets clipped by the Unraveled <laughs> Earth. And Impact will get shut down. But they're going to lose their inhibitor tower. Is this even worth it? They lost the tier two. They're going to lose their tier three. Now TL have to run because now you got to get out of there. Make sure you don't actually die on the exit. Teleport. Whippa wants to cut their escape route as fast as possible. Charm already lands on Debusio. They kite him back. Inspired. Q flash. Lands the knock up on the Dion. Seismic shove connects. Yawn is gone. A majority of the damage from Team Liquid is already out of the fight. Core JJ is left behind and Umti and APA run for the hills. And you can see the immediate pings there from FlyQuest towards mid lane. You know, they're looking to try to move there. Umti's trying to clear this wave out as much as he possibly can because he knows that's the wave that could be attacked. That's where they could try to get something more. If you just lose those couple kills, it's honestly not that bad because you've got multiple towers. They're worth a lot of gold, but Umti's still got to huff it out of here. Yeah, they are in hot pursuit. Jensen, he's going to land a blind, a shove. Doesn't quite connect it, but the slow is going to be enough. Permafrost stacking up. Inspire taking turret damage. They want to get this kill. Is it enough? The seismic oh. shove once again from Jensen connects. Okay, they chase down the straggler. They push up mid lane. This one is still action packed, but now it's flying it's look for all. at your door. Guess what? There's the arrow. Spirit rush dodge. Weaver wall from Jensen comes in. They're going to get this middle inhibitor for free. Do they want to push for the end? They've got six void grubs. Remember. Eh. I mean, um, Umpty's still dead for 25 seconds or so. And look but at bot lane. Look at bot lane. They're losing their inhibitor tower potentially. It died. It died with minions. Yeah, they've, they've given up too much gold already. Got to go for the reset here. Yeah, this is actually getting Ooh. really crazy. I mean, Dragon's up here in, in a minute 50, but there's now two open inhibitors here for FlyQuest. They're potentially one bad fight away from losing the game. And, and Baron is, is going to be up way quicker than that. Yeah. 40 seconds, so you just go your reset, go back out to Baron. This time around, the critical nature of the turn, using Fog of War to make sure you're going to land that CC and have the follow-up seismic shove. FlyQuest have still been up a decent amount of gold the entire game, but the fact that Team Liquid have found such crucial fights while in a gold deficit just goes to show that Team Liquid still have a chance to close out this game if they find the right fight. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're one fight away from winning the game, right? This is how it becomes. You know, this late into the game with two open inhibitors, if you have a wave and you win a 5v5, GG, that's it. It doesn't matter if FlyQuest was winning for 90% of it uh, because TL have kept themselves in, have been able to give themselves a real shot to win this game. And now both teams here playing through mid, trying to be able to control that mid lane to look for an angle to move to Baron, to look for an angle to go for that Dragon. And it's FlyQuest who gets control as APA was answering that top wave. And they're gonna have that first move to clear out some of this vision. Remember what Fudge said in the lounge, that the first game might be the most important for that mental momentum. And with how long this game has gone, with how back and forth it has been between these two teams. That just might ring true at the end of this game. Stretch line does connect on the Jensen. Chain of Corruptions is caught by Inspired. APA is caught in the middle as Inspired blocks him on the route. Whippo is trying to zone off Yon into the backside. APA is taken out of the fight. Masu can now just free hit. The rest of Team Liquid are getting eviscerated. This is a FlyQuest win, surely. FlyQuest have done it. That's an ace for nothing. A quadra kill for Masu to clean it up. They all piled in on the rookie, but they couldn't take him down. And FlyQuest made him pay. FlyQuest are able to endure the back and forth fights, the challenges by Team Liquid in the opening of this series. But game one belongs to FlyQuest, and they will go up 1 0. Double quadra kills. Uh, in the game here for Masu. That's going to help out with some of the confidence for the rookie for playoffs. Mm -hmm. First ever LCS playoff game there for Masu. Not bad. Two quadra kills, 11 kills on the Glista. Was a rough start for their yeah. bot lane in that 2v2, but they were able to claw back. A really dominant performance in the early game from the top side there from FlyQuest. Did get shaky in some moments. TL were able to punish some mistakes, absolutely. But I think we saw a preview of what's going to be a really fun series. It's looking like it's going to be an absolute slugfest. And there's just been so much trash talk back and forth. They're hitting APA with the nice charms to end the game. <laughs> the the check-ins on the all chat already have been fire. I'm yeah. very excited for the entire series. Yeah, we're going to see if APA and the rest of Team Liquid are keeping up the trash talk or FlyQuest are going to dominate. But a reminder that Fantasy LCS is...